Hi, my name's Ultra, and I want to tell you about the Transformers. Today, I'd like to tell you about the Transformers Armada episode, Bass. Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. In this episode, the kids learn why the Autobots and Decepticons are battling over the Minicons. This episode picks up from where the last one left off. Rad says previously on Transformers Armada, but the clips shown were not in the last episode. Ah, the rushed nature of this show. I intend to crush you, and that includes your little friends. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. So the kids run for cover as Optimus soaks up some shots. <laughs> oh no, he's hit! Really, what was your first clue, Red Alert? Megatron then power links with his Minicon Leader One in order to power up his cannon. But I think he needs some practice with it. <laughs> you missed! It's time to turn it off. <laughs> Megatron! Are you alright? Are you alright? Whoa! I know sometimes Armada can have some janky animation, but what is up with Starscream and Demolishor here? Especially Demolishor! Wow! It looks like he went up a few cup sizes! I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Yes, I'm fine! Now go and destroy the obnoxious Optimus Prime! Yes, sir! Huh? I do find it kind of cool and funny though how Optimus just grabs Starscream by the face and throws him at Demolishor. You picked the wrong planet. Give me your face. <laughs> However, all of Megatron's blasting uncovers three new Minicons. The first being Hotshot's partner Jolt. No relation to the movie character Jolt. The second being Red Alert's partner Minicon, Longarm. No relation to the Transformers animated character Longarm, aka Shockwave's Autobot mode. But the third is stolen by Cyclonus, which turns out to be his partner Crumplezone. No relation to the Transformers Cybertron character of the same name. Quick update in the middle of this video. While editing, I noticed that it looks like there might actually be four Minicon plates uncovered by Megatron's blasting. There were only three Twinkles. But after Hotshot and Red Alert receive their partner Minicons, when Cyclonus is reaching towards the kids, we can briefly spot a second Minicon plate in Alexis's arms. We only see Cyclonus pull out one Minicon plate, but I'm guessing that this is where Demolishor's Minicon came from, and thus why Starscream and him were actually fighting. Again, Transformers Armada, especially in these early episodes, was kind of infamous for its sloppy writing and poor animation at times. Oh well, back to your regularly scheduled Ultra Primal review! Transformers, who's that Minicon? It's Joel! Joel! They return to base, aka the front half of the Minicon ship, where Rad and Optimus recap the first episode, just in case you missed it. They also introduce themselves. My name is Red Alert. And you can call me Hotshot, because that's what I am, and I don't take any prisoners. Wow, that's kind of dark there, Hotshot. Do they not have a Cybertronian version of the Geneva Convention? If a Decepticon were to surrender to you, would you just execute them on the spot? Optimus then explains how they are different from the Decepticons. The Minicons are the pawns in our battle. Whoever possesses them has the upper hand and is sure to go on to victory. So the Decepticons want to use the Minicons to gain power, right? Isn't that what you want too? Yes, but we treat the Minicons as equals, see? To the Decepticons, they are nothing but slaves. And when the war is over, the Minicons shall be free. They helped build our cities and our industries on Cybertron. They were built and designed to be workers, but never slaves. I don't know, Optimus. That still kind of sounds like they're slaves. 
I mean, why can they only be workers? Why can't there be mini-con scientists, or artists, or do something other than manual labor? Seems kind of functionist to me. The kids then explain what a fist bump is, which the Autobots and Minicons then mimic. Aww, so cute! Sometime later, the kids are playing basketball at school. And the only things that I'd like to point out here are that I feel sorry for Fred who keeps getting hit in the face with the basketball. And that Alexis looks super cute in her uniform. I especially like the pink shirt under her penny. And the white wristbands. It's so cute! Yes! That's the third time in a row we kicked their butts! Well, it was two on three. Seriously, why doesn't Fred and Billy have a third person on their team? That doesn't seem fair. Back on the moon, Starscream and Demolisher battle to see who will be Megatron's right-hand bot. But Megatron soon breaks it up. I do not need my men fighting amongst themselves, thank you. Hmm. Remember this line in a future episode. Megatron then awards a minicon to Demolishor, his partner Blackout. No relation to the movie character Blackout. Back at the Autobot base, the kids are introduced to Laserbeak. Oh wow, he's so cute! Hey, that's my line, Alexis! Actually, I don't think Laserbeak is all that cute. Well, he's a little cute, but there's just something about having two barrels for a face. It's kind of hard to see it as cute. And this episode ends with the Autobots detecting Minicon signals activating all over the globe. Well, this was an okay episode of Transformers Armada. Like I mentioned, there were some weird animation errors in this episode, but that's kind of to be expected in Armada. Billy having the hots for Alexis was kind of weird. I mean, I get it. She's cute. But are there no other girls at this school? Come on, dude. Rad saying in the first episode that she's just playing hard to get was already pretty creepy. I really don't want to see every boy in this show drooling over Alexis. Besides, guys, I don't think any of you are her type anyways. I did like some of the funnier moments in this episode. Namely, Megatron knocking himself down with his own cannon. But yeah, overall, kind of your standard fare for a Transformers Armada episode. So let me know what you thought of this episode of Transformers Armada. Remember to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun stuff. And I'll see you back here next time for episode 4, Comrade. See you then!